ESPN 94.1 FM at AM 930 present The Drive. Elmore deep, left side three, and good! From 30 feet, John Elmore! The Drive with Paul Swan. Welcome to the Monday, July 15th edition. The Drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. I am glad to be back. I'm glad we're back. We haven't done this in a while. I mean, last week was a scheduled day vacation for me, and we had some pretty good stuff lined up for you. Dave Walsh is going to come in and, and do a couple days. Bill Cornwell was excited. He's going to come in and do a couple of days. And um, then, oh, you remember right before 4th of July, we had that pretty nasty storm that come through? Well, we got hit, and we've had... I think a Herculean effort by our engineering team just to, to get us to the point where we could get back on the air and do the show. So uh, thanks to those guys working long, tireless, sometimes uh, thankless nights trying to get stuff working for us. So we're back. Glad to be here. We're going to test those phone lines. We haven't tested those yet, so we're going to try to put those under some stress. You can, of course, join us anytime by calling 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. You can be a part of the program. we got a lot to catch up with. I mean, there's a lot going on, so we're going to try to do all of that. And, of course, this week, media days are going to be happening for Conference USA, opportunity for the media nationally and, of course, the local and regional guys that cover the beat to sort of get a feel for what's happening at Conference USA. So that's coming up this week, and definitely we'll have a lot to talk about that in the next few days. But really what that means is summer's over. Once media day happens, summer's over. I know we got an entire month of August. We don't even have July done yet. We've got July and August. But summer's over, folks. It's getting time for some football again. And I know a lot of you are excited. I see the post. I have not been oblivious to the six weeks away. Yeah, you guys are counting, dying for some football. So hopefully we're going to have that here in the next few weeks. I'm excited for everyone just because, you know what, summertime, sometimes there's not a lot going on. We had a great run early on in the spring with Marshall basketball. That was great. And then you get into those dead months, not much really going on. As far as Marshall's concerned, Things are starting to get back into motion now. Things are going to be picking up. Schedules are released. Volleyball, softball, doing their thing early. Soccer, everything's happening. So we're getting to a point now where, all right, it's time to to really get back into the swing of things. So that's where we're at today. And, of course, again, we invite you to join the program, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255, as we get you back into the habit. Glad to be here. Our producer this afternoon, Gabriel Sellers, glad to be back with us as well. Now, you know, with everything that's happening, everything that's happening, we've got coaches making their picks because they're all together. And today, we found out that several players in the Thundering Herd making the coaches pick. Now, again, this is all preseason. This is all preseason honors, but Marshall does have some representation as far as the preseason teams are concerned. Now, Marshall didn't get any of the really uh, vanity positions. Offensive player of the year is Mason Fine, the senior quarterback from North Texas. Defensive player of the year is Sage Lewis, the linebacker from FIU. Special teams player of the year going to Jonathan Cruz, the kicker from Charlotte. So, Uh, This is, of course, again, these are the preseason awards. So these are the guys who are picked in those positions as the offensive, defensive, and special teams player of the year. Now, the offensive team looks like this for Conference USA, and I'm going to read the whole thing for you. Mason Fine, obviously, since he's the offensive player of the year, quarterback, uh, Spencer Brown Jr. and Benny LeMay Sr. are your running backs. Brown Jr. from UAB and um, LeMay from Charlotte. So Spencer Brown, a junior from UAB, and Benny LeMay, a senior from Charlotte, are your running backs. Levi Brown makes the list for Marshall on the offensive line. Josh Dunlop, UTSA, makes the list. Uh, Darren Gatewood from UTEP makes the list on the offensive line. Sosea Mose 
North Texas makes the list, and then Miles Pate, offensive lineman, also makes the list from Western Kentucky. And then you've got Harrison Bryant from Florida Atlantic as a tight end. And then your wide receivers, Rico Bussey from North Texas, Adrian Hardy from Louisiana Tech, and Quez Watkins from Southern Miss, all making the preseason offensive team. One Marshall guy there. Okay. Defensively, it looks a little bit better. Channing Hames, of course, on the list. And then you get Chris Jackson on the list. So you get a couple of guys there. That's good. You'll take that, right? You'll take a couple more herd players. And then you've got on the special team side, Matt Beardall from Thundering Herd representing special teams. So all in all, you get a few guys on the defensive side. You get of course, some representation on the offense, and you get some representation on the special team side. Now, defensively, uh, there's some names. You can remember some of these names. You remember these guys. Ladarius Hamilton, North Texas. Uh, Alex Highsmith from Charlotte. Garrett Mar- uh, Marino from UAB. Demario Smith is on the list from Southern Miss. Jaquez Turner, you definitely remember him, Southern Miss as well. Uh, Kali Brooks from Middle Tennessee. Sage Lewis, FIU, obviously on the list as the Defensive Player of the Year. And then uh, Rasheem Booth from Southern Miss. Reed Blankenship from Middle Tennessee is on the list. Uh, Kyle Hembley from Southern Miss on the list. Amik Robertson from Louisiana Tech. And, of course, as I mentioned, Chris Jackson on the list for the DB side. So you got two guys from Thundering Herd making the list there. And then at special teams, I mean, really – Special Teams Player of the Year is Jonathan Cruz, so he's on the list as the kicker. Alvin Kenworthy is on the list from North Texas as the punter. Uh, Kick return, uh, Brett Winnigan from UTSA. Maurice Alexander from FIU is the punt returner. And then, of course, your long snapper, uh, Matt Beardall. So that's the list. That is what the coaches are saying collectively is what they're seeing from the league this year. It's an interesting list. Do you think that maybe some um, Thundering Herd players uh, got the shaft, or is, it does it matter, really? Preseason awards, does it matter? I would rather get accolades on the postseason side. Yeah. I mean, it's nice. You, uh, people recognize you. Hey, you know what? Mason Fine, he's going to be the guy to watch here, at quarterback, offensive player of the year, preseason offensive player of the year. Okay, that's a great award. What does that mean at the end of the season? I mean, seriously, what does that mean? It means one of two things. Either, yeah, he was, the media got it right, he backed it up, or in this case, the coaches, because this is the coaches' preseason stuff. Media, we pick our stuff as well. Every media outlet, everybody's got a, a different watch list and a different award. But the coaches are saying, hey, this is the guy to watch out for. Okay. And so... It's like, I don't know if it's like Oscar season, just about. It's like movie award season. Hey, here are the movies to look out for. These could be the ones to take home. Some big awards here. This could be, these are Oscar contenders. Well, you know, okay. Mason Fine, he's got a lot to live up to. I mean, is he going to be the offensive player of the year when this is all said and done? That's the thing. So I don't put too much into this. I'm not a big, okay, preseason award. I mean, sure, it's great to have. It's great to have. And now you got guys that are in the locker room probably going, oh, okay. All right. I'm not good enough to make the preseason defensive team, huh? Okay. I'm going to remember that. I mean, there are some guys that will look at that, and you'll go, okay. I'm going to show them up. I got something to say about that. And that will fuel some guys. They're really – will fuel some guys because they didn't make the list, so that's going to fuel people. That's going to put some guys in a situation where they're going to go, you know what? I, I don't think I don't think you guys got it right. And then there are other guys who just don't care. Like, okay, that's fine. Because they, they're not in it for preseason awards. They're in to win games, hopefully win a championship, win – the bowl game, bowl games are big. When you're Marshall, bowl games are big. So there's a different level of hierarchy here. 
But just because Mason finds your quarterback and offensive player of the year on the list here doesn't mean that you know the other quarterbacks in the league are going to be going, okay, we'll get this. We'll see what happens. So that's really what this is all about. You're going to get those. I mean, we're going to talk about it for a few days. And, and again, that's what a lot of these lists are. Just to start talking around it, generating some interest. I mean, we can talk about this now. Hey, you know, what's Marshall got to do? What's Marshall got to do? Because only a couple of guys get recognized. Or it's a deep conference as well. It's a deep conference. you got several players who uh, get recognition. I mean, North Texas is going to be one of the teams to contend. Let's be honest. And so they got a few more guys. Right, sure. Defensively, Southern Miss is going to be a team. Watch out. Southern Miss well represented on the defensive side of this. So what that means to me is an indicator that, okay, the coaches, they kind of feel that a strong point of Southern Miss is going to be their defense. And you look at some of these names, and, you know, yeah, there's some good guys on this list. Jacquez Turner. I mean, his name stands out to me instantly from Southern Miss. And Demario Smith stands out to me. Channing Hames stands out to me as well. And Chris Jackson stands out to me. So definitely not an omission there. But at the end of the day, preseason awards, they're great. What would you rather have? You'd rather have that preseason award or would you rather have that postseason success, postseason trophies? I mean, we're, what, 47 days? Am I doing my math right here? 47 a day, 47 days. 47 days till the season opener. Can you believe we're 47 days away? It, it felt like yesterday we were months away. Now we're 47. We are my age away from football back at Jones C. Edwards Stadium. All right, we're going to take our first break. We'll come back. We're going to get this show on the road and We'll get your phone calls in, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. We're getting everything back in order here. You know, the band is back together. We're here until 6 o'clock, and you're listening to it all right here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. In the Ad Council. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. 877-420-1450, 877-420-1450. 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255 to be a part of today's program here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Paul Swan, your host, glad to be back. We're just glad to be back, period. So if you uh, have missed us, we apologize. So we have been working a long time trying to get everything back in order so we can come back on the air and uh, do this show we do every day and we appreciate you guys sticking around sticking it out waiting for us and so here we are back again so perfect timing too because we're just that much closer to the start of football that's right august 31st vmi on stadium now I, i'm catching up it's been a few days it's been a week and, and then some. It's been a few days. So we're going to go over some things because I haven't had a chance to talk about it, so I'm talking about it. First of all, as I pretty much gathered, remember when the NFL Network deal was announced, hey, Conference USA is going to be on NFL Network, and then you get the full TV schedule, and Marshall's not on that schedule. You're like, whoa, NFL Network? Why wouldn't the NFL Network want – to have Marshall on. And I'm sitting there going, you know, because Stadium got the pick before NFL Network. And I know a lot of people were like, well, wait, this 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 is not right. The NFL Network should have precedence over Stadium. Well, yeah, not in the current TV deal, no. Stadium has been around a little longer than Conference USA's um, wheelhouse than NFL Network. So as we talked about, no NFL Network games because Stadium jumped on a whole bunch of them. VMI Stadium, Ohio Stadium Facebook, Cincinnati's on CBS Sports Network. I didn't mention Boise State. That's on ESPN2. And then you've got Middle Tennessee on CBS Sports Network, Facebook. Old Dominion's on Stadium. FAU on CBS Sports Network. Western Kentucky and Rice Stadium. 
Louisiana Tech, CBS Sports Network, Charlotte's on Stadium, Facebook, and then FIU is on CBS Sports Network, where there are some schools that got picked. They didn't have um, – they're like the third pick. They got the better end of the deal, maybe television-wise, because they were the, all right, kid sitting in the corner, one of the last kids picked for the dodgeball team. And then here comes this awesome dodgeball player. I want that – well, that's that's my game right there. And you're sitting there going, wait a minute. Marshall game's way more attractive. Well, that's how it rolls. So, NFL Network picking third. They should get second. I would think C- I would think CBS would be your first. You'd have to keep C- – because CBS is going to be more of a primary channel for you than the NFL Network. I mean, maybe NFL Network gets to go first. Maybe you treat them like, okay, you guys would get first on football. That's what you're here for. And then CBS, you get first on everything else and second for for this. I, I don't know how you would work that out. And then I would tell Stadium, hey, you're third. Doesn't matter. I don't care what the monies look like. I don't care what the contracts look like. At the end of the day, Stadium's picking third. If I get to rework this deal, and of course I'm I'm not involved in any of that. That's just me. I would prioritize NFL Network, ESPN, CBS Sports. I would prioritize all of that, everything before Stadium. Not to say Stadium's terrible. It's just on the lower end of the spectrum for me. I mean, honestly, national exposure. I would take okay. What's best for the conference? I would forget anything and everything else. What's best for the conference? Well, having the best matchups on the biggest platform. You're looking for that reach. Best matchups, biggest platform. And you got to decide right here. NFL Network, is that going to get you more reach than CBS Sports Network? Is it pretty much push? NFL Network maybe has a a little bit more swagger to it because it's the NFL Network. I mean, you're on the NFL Network. That's a pretty big deal. I mean, they, they show NFL games on the NFL Network. So, you know, that's a pretty big deal. So where do you go with that? Of course, I'm taking – I'm probably taking NFL Network. Maybe it could be talked in the CBS Sports Network being, being one. But at the end of the day, I'm taking them. And the other thing we're going to talk about, and we'll do this when we come back from the break, is um, Denton Chronicle – Denton Record Chronicle, in anticipation of or in advance of, of course, you got Football Media Days coming up Wednesday and Thursday, going to be in Frisco. And Denton Record Chronicle, they do a great job. They talk to all the principals, talk to more than a dozen CUSA officials. They talk to athletic directors. They talk to Judy McLeod. They talk to coaches. And one guy they talked to who had a lot to say, because I think it's fair to say Mike Hamrick has a lot of importance in Conference USA. I'm not saying he's more important than anyone else, but I'm saying he's got a lot of importance in Conference USA. He's been around a little longer than some, and I'm not saying his words have more sway than others, but I honestly believe when Mike Hamrick has something to say, people take notice in Conference USA. And he said, and this is uh, this is the Denton Record Chronicle talking about the new Conference USA. Yeah, you know, after Western Kentucky had finally been installed, and what the new look Conference USA was. And Hamrick said in the Denton Record Chronicle that television markets were important. And he said, the second thing I felt we needed in most cases was larger institutions with large student bodies in areas with the potential to draw fans. So we'll talk about this and talk about the overall temperature of Conference USA when we continue with today's edition of The Drive. Our phone lines, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Hold true, great taste, only 96 calories, the original light beer we got more on the way. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. P and the Ad Council. 
Now, back to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN FM and AM 930. 877-4877-420-8255 to join us on the Miller Lite phone lines this hour. Miller Lite, hold true, great taste, only 96 calories, the original light beer. Uh, The Conference USA Coaches Preseason Awards are out. That means we're just that much closer to the start of football season and to the jubilation of all of you. And we were talking about earlier the Denton Record Chronicle. Uh, this thing is, uh, I'm not going to read it all to you. They, they did their due diligence and then some talking to a lot of officials in Conference USA ahead of Media Days, which takes place Wednesday and Thursday. Sort of the official kickoff to the Conference USA season. And we were talking about the start of the article basically is covering milestones. And we're a few years now in on the final milestone. You got Western Kentucky in the league to complete the group that is today, Conference USA. And Mike Hamrick in the article was quoted as saying television markets were important. The second thing I felt, quote, the second thing I felt we needed in most cases was larger institutions with large student bodies and areas with the potential to draw fans. And, okay, that's sound logic because you want a school that has a lot of students. You want a school that has a student body that's engaged, an alumni base that's engaged, and that will helpfully grow Conference USA, right? Do you invite a small enrollment-based institution, or do you go after a larger area and you go after a large student body that could potentially be a coveted audience? I mean, it's television-centric. I get it. Now, does it matter? Yes and no. If those student bodies aren't engaged, for one thing, I think engagement is important. Now, if you've got 5,000 engaged in your student body of maybe 5,000, you got them all engaged. That's, that's pretty cool. That's good. But how can you grow the league if you've got a small base to begin with? And so you're going after a larger base. I get that completely. Understand. So 25th year, Conference USA, 25 years of this stuff. And Judy McLeod said that they're in a good place. That was her quote. She said, we're in a good place. Conference USA is a very diverse league in a lot of ways with geography and university missions. It has taken some time to get to the point where we celebrate those differences. It will take even more time to develop rivalries, but we're off to a good start. I mean, she's going to be positive. What are you going to have the commissioner say? Come out and say, yeah, this this league is terrible. I'm holding it together with glue and tape. And staples. No, she she's basically playing on what is Conference USA today. It's a diverse league. It is a diverse le- league with geography. I don't think that this is the right approach across the board for conference. Because I don't have any... I don't have any feeling for a lot of those teams in the West. It's not that they're not any good. It's just, you know, North Texas, okay, hey. Yeah, okay, they're they're in the league. It's not the same. I've got more affinity for Middle Tennessee geography. Yeah, geography plays a part in that. I've got more affinity for Western Kentucky. Again, geography plays a part of that. I mean, a little bit closer. I mean, you look at the MAC, geography played a part. You had Ohio, you had Miami, you had Toledo. Yeah, sure, you were you were playing in Ohio for a majority of your league games, but at the same time, those were games you could get to. Those were games with schools that you had some, some history with. And, again, I know you talk about rivalries, Marshall and Ohio, not the biggest rival. It's Ohio and Miami. Those are – the two schools that like to get after each other, even though Ohio and Marshall uh, a little bit closer to each other. It's a rivalry, but not on the same level. But and that's one thing. Again, Marshall's missing that. Marshall's missing rivalries. So the geography, I think, has hurt Conference USA. 
it hasn't helped Marshall. You're in a better place now, but rivalry-wise, Marshall's primary rival. Can you name it? 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. You tell me right now, Conference USA, the primary Marshall rivalry. Can you do it? I mean, not you like to. I mean, name the rivalry. Name the school that is the primary rivalry with Conference USA. And no, Gabriel, not in Conference USA. My producer, no, that school is not in Conference USA. I'm not mentioning that school. Stop it. First day back. I do not, not fall in for that. Gabriel Sellards, our producer, is trying to bait me in saying this uh, word. I don't say that word. We don't say that word around here. It's not good. Marshall's rival. Can you tell me? I don't think. As far as the primary rival for Marshall and Conference USA, that they look at Marshall as the primary rival for them. You can't do it. You cannot do it. Because I don't think it exists just yet. So, geography hasn't helped. Hasn't hurt, but it hasn't helped. Because, again... This is the hand you're dealt with. But if I'm going down the list right now, I'm looking at, okay, FIU, FAU, I'm thinking, I'm thinking those two are are pretty much each other's biggest rival in conference. I'm thinking FIU, FAU, biggest rival. All right. And then Charlotte and Old Dominion. I'm going to say Charlotte and Old Dominion probably get after each other more. And then I'm going to definitely say Middle Tennessee and Western Kentucky get after each other more. Sure, Marshall's got a thing with Middle Tennessee. Sure, Marshall's got a thing with Western Kentucky. Sure, Marshall's got a thing with Florida Atlantic. Yeah, you like to get after all these teams, but your primary rival is which one of these schools? Is it Middle Tennessee? Is it Western Kentucky? Is it Old Dominion? Is it Charlotte? Is it Florida Atlantic? Is it FIU? I mean, from a standpoint of the East, everybody's got somebody but Marshall. And then I don't even know to tell you in the West. I I can't even tell you. I I don't know. I mean, does UTSA care about Rice? Does Rice care about UTEP? Does Southern Miss care about North Texas? Does Louisiana Tech care about Rice? Does UAB? I I couldn't tell you there. So I think geography has hurt this conference. I think it's a big deal. I mean, Judy's in a good place, she says. She's she's right, though. It's going to take even more time to develop rivalries. But Marshall just doesn't have that primary rival. There's not, you know, it's not a matchup where the other school doesn't like you as much, and they look forward to not liking you as much as you look forward to not liking them. You don't have that. And again, a lot of these schools have some previous history because um, Conference USA was supposed to be a move up from the Sun Belt for a lot of these schools to move up. Money was going to be better. Exposure was going to be better. Hey, yeah, okay. Uh, maybe not. But you had a situation where Conference USA was not the Conference USA Marshall thought it was getting into, and I'm sure a lot of these schools are jumping into Conference USA and it's not the Conference USA they thought they were getting into. But I think the Florida schools, I think the 100 miles of hay, all that stuff's cool. But, I mean, you got some schools that left, they bolted for the AAC. And right now, Marshall's just not among the top Group of five conference uh, members. I mean, Marshall, by default, is not among the top schools in the group of five because Conference USA is not there. Um, here's what UNT Athletic Director uh, Ren Baker, he says his program, as well as Conference USA, are rising to meet the challenges and have tremendous growth potential. Okay, North Texas, I think, has got some potential there. You're right. North Texas... They won the West Division title in 2017. Uh, Their Olympic sports have done very well, especially women's soccer. That's a signature sport for them. 
they um, they said that they are adapting. Took them a couple years. Uh, they're developing rivalries. Yeah, they're developing rivalries. Their fan support has grown. Okay, so North Texas, they feel this is a good thing. Um, and again, back to my point. I just think some of these schools, like Old Dominion, for example. I mean, they pointed out Old Dominion and UTEP are more than 2,000 miles apart. Um, I just... They use the word diversity. When talking to these um, these officials, they're using the word diversity, and I get that. There is diversity. And you're pretty sure the Conference USA is not going anywhere anytime soon because nobody's going to pick these schools up. And let's go back to the AAC. There's an opening. Connecticut's out. Connecticut's leaving. Uh-oh, that means there's a spot. AAC, who they're taking from Conference USA, uh, and yeah, no, I haven't heard the phone ring yet. We'll talk more about that when we continue. The phone lines are for you at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. we got more on the way. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan, the 2019 West Virginia Broadcasters Association Best Talk Show on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Monday, July 15th edition. The Drive continues on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. And uh, we wouldn't be able to be on the air if it wasn't for our engineering staff working hard to get us back. So we thank them once again. Appreciate them. Gabriel Sellers, our producer this afternoon. We'll take your phone calls at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. So we've been talking ahead of media days coming up for Conference USA. And to kick off, we can we can truly start thinking about football in earnest. And a uh, great article, Brett Vito does a great job for the Denton Record Chronicle. They talk to... Uh, over a dozen Conference USA officials, athletic directors, coaches. And we were talking about the Connecticut, the AC question. And that was a big story for a lot of people in Conference USA because here's the opportunity. Here is the opportunity. Here it is. AAC, they'd lead the pack in the group of five, and that'd be an opportunity for Marshall to move up. Well, according to some on the social medias, ouch, because here's what Mike Hamrick was reported to say. He says, we all realize we aren't going anywhere. That brings you closer together. Now, that's in really response to the fact that Conference USA's lineup is, is pretty much it's not going to change anytime soon. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't an opening for a school to maybe move up, move to a different conference. Maybe the AAC picks up a school. Maybe it comes from Conference USA. I don't think that's a Mike Hamrick saying, hey, you know what? We're stuck. We're just stuck. No, I think he's basically saying, hey, look, you know, we're all together right now. We're not going anywhere. Unless something Major happens and there's a big shakeup. We're not going anywhere. And, of course, all anecdotal, the socials went, what? Mike Hamrick doesn't have a plan. We're stuck. No, not at all. I think Mike Hamrick realizes, all right, here's what I got to work with. And if I want to be competitive, I got to work with what I have. And it's right now the best place for me to work with what I have is right here because it's going to be a major undertaking to be able to compete across the board, across the board. Maybe in the AAC, the budgets are bigger, the schools are spending more, and I don't know if Marshall could be necessarily top to bottom competitive. Now, for a lot of people, Marshall athletics begins and ends with Marshall football. And for some others, Marshall Athletics begins with Marshall football and ends with Marshall basketball. And even for some, Marshall Athletics begins with basketball, maybe ends with football, 
or never even began with football to begin with. There's at least two or three subsects of Marshall. There's like tribes within the Marshall family here. There are tribes. You know it's true. They're tribes. And so sometimes you look past that and then you see these other athletic programs and you want them to be competitive also. And I don't know if a Marshall Athletic Department could, even with the extra money you're going to get from joining an AAC, if they even extend the invite, I don't know what your budget is going to look like because you're going to need more donation, you're going to need more donation, and you're going to need sources of revenue. I mean, sure, you're going to get some television money. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a guarantee. You're going to get some more television money if you would join a, a higher-profile league a league with a better TV contract. Yeah, you're going to get that money. But what are you spending to make it? That's a question. And at the same time, what is that going to do for you overall when it comes to your other athletic programs? I mean, to me, I want Marshall to be dominant in Conference USA before I'm talking to anybody about going to the AAC. I mean, seriously. At the end of the day, Talk to me about going to the AAC when Marshall is dominant in everything in Conference USA, either competing on a yearly basis. And I don't mean they're in the postseason tournament. I mean they're in championship games, they're winning championships, they're runner-ups. Every program, top to bottom, I want to see a well-rounded competitive program that can compete. Now, I'm not saying that Marshall doesn't have competitive programs, but how many championships has Marshall won? I mean, it all comes down to this. How many championships does Marshall have? And you don't have that many. How many championships did you have this year? I'm going to tell you right now. You didn't have any championships this year in Conference USA. Not in the men's side, not in the women's side. Here's what it looked like. I mean, here's your championships. Cross country, North Texas, UTEP. Women's soccer, um, North Texas. I'm talking tournament champions here. I'm not even going to go with the regular season champ. Um, Men's soccer, Kentucky, volleyball, Rice. Football, UAB. FIU swimming and diving. UTEP indoor track. Men's Indoor Track, Charlotte. Women's Basketball, Rice. Men's Basketball, Old Dominion. Men's Tennis, Marshall does not compete. Middle Tennessee. Women's Tennis, Rice. Women's Golf, UTSA. Men's Golf, Middle Tennessee. Softball, Louisiana Tech. Charlotte, Men's Outdoor Track. Women's Outdoor Track, Charlotte. Baseball, Southern Miss. Now, and with that said, though, Let's not, let's not drop on Marshall because in football, Marshall had postseason uh, opportunity. Women's basketball, Marshall had a postseason opportunity. Men's basketball, Marshall had a postseason opportunity and won a postseason tournament. Softball, Marshall had a postseason opportunity. So there is something to be said. But at the end of the day, you got to win some championships, right? you got to win some championships. Like I said, I'm not going to read this whole thing to you. That's not the whole point here. I just want to talk a little bit about it. But I really wanted to point that out, that you're looking at a league that, sure, the revenues are not where it used to be, and the NFL Network will add to that. And they're they're starting to, to get more revenue in. You're not going to see massive amounts of revenue anytime soon for Conference USA. How do you improve that? Well, Conference USA has got to be, one, a competitive league with other group of five universities. Plain and simple. You're just going to have to be better than them on the floor, on the field, on the court, wherever you compete. Now, it's easier said than done. You're done, but you got to be more competitive. And you got to have fans who are engaged. That's the thing. That's the thing. And I get that's frustrating for a lot of people, but – each school has got to be a lot better at developing their fan bases, their alumni, growing that. I mean, you've got to get a situation where you show up and there are fans ready to go. It's a, it's a big deal. And that's everybody. FIU, you got to get your fans up. Charlotte, you got to get your fans going. Florida Atlantic, 
Lane Train's got to get that thing rolling again. LaTeX, Skip Holtz, you got to get those fans out. Right? Doc Marshall, you got the best fans in Conference USA. You, you, you applaud them. Hurt fans, sell out the Joan. Sell out the Joan. That's a thing. That's another thing. Selling out helps. You want Marshall to move up? Well, you, you better be prepared to be a, a higher level fan. That means showing up, attending. Show up. Don't bemoan what you don't like. Hey, are you a herd fan? Yeah, okay, we'll see you Saturday. Or in some cases, Friday. Those are important big time things. I mean, you're getting better crowds in Cam Henderson Center for the men. I mean, it's great. It's fantastic. Atmosphere. It's been tremendous to watch basketball in the Cam Anderson Center with the crowds that are getting better and more consistent. That's fun. What if you actually had a near capacity crowd at Jones C. Edwards Stadium? I mean, your attendance is good. I'm not saying you're not showing up. I'm saying more of you got to show up. Then we can start talking about uh, Marshall's future here. But you got to control what you can control. And that's going to do it for this edition of the show. Told you I had a lot to get into. Hadn't been here for a few days. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll do it all over again right here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I want to thank Gabriel Sellers. Appreciate him. I want to thank uh, the uh, engineering staff here, uh, Kendra Communications, uh, Alex Hackney, Kenny Sellers. We appreciate those guys uh, doing everything they can to get us back to where we could be with you every day here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington, your flagship home of the Marshall Thundering Herd and The Drive with Paul Swan, ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Well, Jason, I've got to tell you, you're pretty much everything this